Hi students, welcome to lecture 49 in our aerospace engineering course. And today I am going to discuss accelerated rate of climb. So essentially this is climb, but now you have acceleration instead of just the steady state which we discussed in a previous lecture. So let us again go back to that steady climb picture and we have the aircraft, we have the various forces acting on it. So you have the lift, the weight, the drag and the thrust. And what happens here is that because it's in steady climb, the force balance will take place. So the equation we get is thrust equals drag plus weight into sine theta. So that's the component of weight in the drag direction. So this is the first equation. And what we are going to do is that we are going to now presume that there is acceleration taking place along the flight path. And so this equation is going to change. So what happens in accelerated climb is that you have the same diagram here, but now in the direction of the flight path, you have T minus T minus W sine theta, which is the component in this direction, is equal to M dV by dt. So essentially we have now applied Newton's law of motion and we have assumed that acceleration is there. So remember that acceleration is given by dV by dt. And of course, m is the mass. So mass into acceleration is the force which is acting in the direction of the flight path. That's Newton's law. So now we are going to look at this equation and try to make sense about the accelerated climb situation. So what happens in accelerated climb is that we look at the energy aspects of the aircraft. So let's assume the aircraft is flying and it is at some altitude given by h and it's got a velocity given by v. So we know from our basic knowledge of physics that the energy associated with this aircraft is going to be the potential energy or Pe plus the kinetic energy or Ke and the potential energy is mgh that's mass into gravity into the altitude and the kinetic energy is given by half m v square so m again is the mass and v is the velocity of the aircraft so this is the total energy of the aircraft when it is flying in this manner so now we will define the concept known as the specific energy and to do that we take the total energy which i derived in the previous slide and we are going to divide this particular value by the weight of the aircraft. So the specific energy or H subscript E is PE plus KE divided by W. So that's MGH plus half MV square, the potential energy plus the kinetic energy divided by MG. So MG is the weight of the aircraft, the mass into the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meter per second square. So now in this equation, of course, the m's are going to cancel out and we are going to simplify this further. So let's take that same equation he and we write it out once again. And then what we do is that we can clearly see that he is going to be h plus half v square by g. So what I divided, what I did here is that I took the terms in the numerator and I divided each of these terms by mg. So the mgh term simply becomes h and the half mv square term divided by mg simply becomes half v square by g. So now you can clearly see that we have an equation which has created a new height which we will call as energy height and this is essentially the altitude plus half v square by g. So what this lets us do is that it creates one metric through which we can express the kinetic energy when it is added to the potential energy of the system. So we are able to express this energy simply in terms of the energy height HE, which we can use in terms of meters, for example, if we are using the SI unit system. Now, you clearly see here that as the velocity will increase, the effective energy height or the energy height of the aircraft is going to increase. So you may be at a certain height and if the velocity is more the energy height becomes more if the velocity is less the energy height becomes less so this lets us plot a very important diagram 
So we have plotted here H versus the Mach number. And so what happens now is that we essentially plot these HE curves. So let's say that HE is at a certain value, five kilometer, that's the energy height. Then this red line is going to show this curve. If HE is 10 kilometers, then the green line is showing that curve. And if, if HE is 15 kilometer, then this purple line is showing that curve here. So essentially what's happening in any of these curves here, you can see that in this direction, the potential energy is going up because height is going up. And in this direction, the kinetic energy is going up because the Mach number is going up. Mach number is nothing but a proxy for velocity. So essentially it's related to this part of the term that is half V square by G. Now let's take this green curve here and let's look at the different points. So if we start at this point here, here the velocity is zero or Mach number is zero and so you just have H. Then at certain point here, you would have the velocity to be at the highest value and the altitude is zero. So these are the two extreme points of the curve corresponding to the situation where V is zero and H is zero. Now at all the different points on the curve, what's going to happen is that you have a combination of H and V such that you have these two particular points. And what the points in this graph are telling you is that at all these points, the aircraft essentially has the same energy height. So essentially at any of these points, you can trade the velocity for the altitude or the altitude for the velocity. So if the guy is at a higher altitude, he can essentially come down and increase his velocity or he can actually decide to go from this high velocity region to a higher altitude altitude region and he can trade some of that velocity for that. So essentially he can move along this particular path. Now, if an aircraft is at a greater HE value, for example, 15 kilometers, then this guy has an advantage if there is any fight between these two planes. So again, this is something which is important is that a higher value of energy height gives you more energy and that is very important if you are a fighter. So generally when you are a fighter aircraft, you should fly high and you should have high velocity. Both these things are going to be beneficial for you. So now we are going to do some further mathematics and get some equations. So let's start with the equation of motion for a climbing flight where acceleration is present. So the MDV by DT term is present. And now we are going to rewrite this equation slightly here. So I have T minus D. I've taken the W sine theta to the right hand side and got this equation here. Now I can immediately multiply this equation in the blue box by V on both sides. And so that gives me TV minus DV is this equation here. And I have taken the W down here. So I divided by W. So I essentially get this equation that V sine theta plus V by G dv by dt. It's nothing but this equation in blue written in a slightly different form. Now I define something known as specific excess power Ps, which is tv minus dv by w. So essentially this particular definition is excess power and it's divided by weight. So we are calling it specific excess power. Recall this excess power was something we have been using in performance calculations previously also when we were talking of level flight and so on. Now let's again just review the concept of rate of climb which we did when we first discussed the climbing flight. So in that kind of situation we had the rate of climb defined as V infinity sine theta. So V infinity is the velocity of the aircraft in this direction. Theta is the angle which the horizontal makes with respect to the flight path. And so rate of climb is this component, which would be V infinity into sine of theta. So when you take V infinity into sine of theta, you get this arrow here, this vector is going to come out and that's the rate of climb. So now we are going to take this rate of climb and also remember the rate of climb is dh by dt or the change in the altitude. So we'll start with the equation we have derived before in terms of the specific excess power and we are going to now declare that ps is the specific excess power so this lets us write this equation as ps equals dh by dt plus 
V by G dV by dt because we know that V sine theta is dH by dt. So that's the substitution I made here. And this has helped me relate the specific excess power and the rate of climb. So this equation is very important. We clearly see that specific excess power is PS and this has two parts. The first part is the rate of climb part and the second part is the acceleration along the flight path. So this concept is so important that I have just written it out again and I have shown an aircraft here. So you clearly see that the specific excess power has two components. You can get it or you can extract from it rate of climb dh by dt if you have specific excess power and you can extract from it acceleration along the flight path dv by dt also. So both these are preferential things which you want especially if you are dealing with a fighter. So what you want to do is have as much specific excess power as possible. It's going to at any time give the pilot dh by dt which essentially means that this guy can climb up very rapidly and it's also going to give him dv by dt which is means that he can accelerate along the flight path. So again let's write this equation here and recall the concept of energy height. So if I take the energy height equation and I differentiate it with respect to time I get this equation here and I can immediately compare these two equations to realize that PS is dHe by dt. So that's coming from these two equations here. So essentially it's telling me that the specific excess power is the derivative of the energy height. So there is a very clear relationship between these two parameters. So let's summarize today's lecture. We clearly see that whenever you are dealing with an aircraft which needs to perform accelerated rate of climb, you would like to have as much excess power as possible. And this excess power is going to give you the possibility of accelerating along the flight path or climbing up rapidly. Both these are going to be possible in this kind of scenario. Also, we see that height can be traded for velocity or velocity can be traded for height and that comes out of the definition of energy height here. So we see that there are various curves related to energy height being the same. So those are locus of the points where h plus half v square by g is constant or h e is constant. And what this tells you is that if you are at a higher height, you can come down and gain velocity. Or if you are at a lower height and you're flying very fast, you can go up and gain height and give up some of your velocity. So generally the best thing for a fighter pilot would be to fly as high as possible that is have a high value of h and fly as fast as possible that is have a high v. So if he is in this kind of situation then it gives him a lot of advantages in terms of maneuvering because he has both potential energy and kinetic energy at his disposal which he can use for whatever he wants to do. So that was the lecture today on accelerated climb. It's slightly different from the previous lecture on steady climb. And of course, this kind of flight is typically required if you have a fighter aircraft or combat aircraft. You generally would not like to subject a civilian jet or a transport jet to this kind of maneuvers because the passengers may not like it and probably even the structure of the aircraft has not been designed to take these kind of loads because that kind of loading may generate too much stresses, too much principal stresses and may have deleterious consequences on the failure criteria and so on. So I'll end this lecture now and I will see you in a lecture sometime soon. See you then.